close to the door, please. Okay. Then I take over and start lecturing again and again and again <laughs> and again. Okay. I was just reflecting over this concept complementarity, compatibility standards that are quite important concepts <coughs> to understand why network economies develop. And within this concept, there is also a need for you to understand what's meant with consumption externalities. What is meant with consumption externalities? And the example in the textbook is that the mail system, the first mail was sent in 1969. And it didn't develop until 1985 and now none of us can understand how to live without email because that's a, a very important communication too and critical mass is here important. If you are alone, it's not very attractive to subscribe an email system. If you are two, it's not very attractive. And the more of your friends that will be in there, the more, the higher the willingness to pay for this product. And at some level, you pass critical mass, and once you pass critical mass, that is enough to go on growing, because willingness to pay, when you have consumption externalities, will increase dramatically the more people out there that you can send mail to. That's quite easy to grasp. And still, it's an important issue, consumption, externalities. Why is it an externality? Because if you subscribe, you just think of your own willingness to pay. But once you have subscribed, all the other that will be users of this main system will have an extra willingness to pay because of you entering the main system. And when you enter, you don't have any incentive to reflect the extra willingness to pay that this will give for all the other users of the mail system. So it's an externality because it's not internalized in your own decision. All the willingness to pay that will be the total value of you entering the mind system. And you only reflect your own willingness to pay. But you still help all the other to increase their willingness to pay because of you now being a part of the mind system. So this is external to the decision makers and you will give the rest of the system an extra value and therefore we call it an externality and this is important in network economies. 
um, switching cost and in knock cost. What is meant with that? When I have my wheelchair and I'm very happy with my wheelchair, I have a computer in front of me and I can regulate everything with my wheelchair, my wheelchair with this computer. And now I've been told the story that through a competitive tendering process, they might change from this uh, wheelchair that's called Pagmobile to another brand that will have a new computer, another computer, and a quite different wheelchair. Do you think I'm happy with that change? Why not? I'm used to this one, and I don't want to learn a new system. I'm used to my computer. I'm used to my wheelchair. I don't want a new wheelchair because I'm happy with this one. And the only reason for changing it is always through a competitive tendering process. The Norwegian system will, cha will choose the cheapest one that will exactly have high enough quality to pass a kind of minimum standard. What will be the most cost efficient that will deliver with the lowest price but maybe my willingness to pay for a high quality wheelchair is rather high, probably rather high, but I'm not allowed to pay. That will be for free. But still, when you change computer system, when you change from one mobile phone to another, do you th do that often? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> You'll be used to the one you have. You don't want to change it. So that is the kind of switching cost in a network economy that can be rather high. You don't really want to change a system that you have learned. You have invested heavily to learn it, and you have a learning by doing process as I am with my wheelchair. It's a learning by doing process, and I'm quite good to manage my wheelchair, and it will take a lot of time to switch to another one. And on the other side, this gives us a lock-in system because if they look at this uh, recorder and they go into YouTube and see me teaching this course and see me telling this story that I want Pamobile to be the winner and I say, please <laughs> do it for my sake. Well, if they listen to the users, then Pamu will definitely will say that. Again, come on, keep on fighting, help us to win. And by doing that, they can increase their own price because they know that they will have fighters out there that will help them to win. And they can put the prices higher, tell me, fight for Pamu and we have this in-lock system that might end up in a wheelchair system that is not the most cost-efficient one because Pamobile might put a price on their wheelchair that gives them a high profit because of me fighting for their case. Okay. <laughs> That's my small story. 
my story from my wheelchair, my computer, and what about economies of scale? How important is that? When you produce a computer game, it's a lot of time to develop it, but once it's there, you will have very, very low cost to produce it. So the variable cost will be very, very low. And the module, the mod short run module cost, very, very low. And the fixed sunk cost, definitely very, very high. And therefore, these network economies often also will have economies of scale. And when we combine all these four compo components that will be the components within a network, network economy, we end up in all of them giving incentives for developing market power and natural monopolists within network economy. And these network economies are quite many of the new modern sectors and we'll find them all around us and it's quite important that we can identify that this industrial sector is typically a network economy sector and we need to analyze it within the model concept dealing with networks. And there are special models, special ways of modeling these network economies that we are going to deal with later on. And in the textbook, there will be one simple model that looks just like my last slide. Next picture. What is the difference between uh, opportunity cost and restriction costs? The difference between? Opportunity cost and restriction costs. The switching cost is the cost you have to take that will be to switch from one alternative to the other. The alternative cost will, to some extent, tell you the same story. That will be the cost of the best alternative. The cost of the best alternative, opportunity cost, is the cost of the best alternative. So once you compare your computer and you ask what will be the opportunity cost, you end up by saying that the opportunity cost is the best alternative and the cost of the best alternative to the one you have. When you say switching cost, that is not always the best alternative. <laughs> for me, for instance, it might easily be that there are many other alternatives that will have much lower switching cost than the one they will give me. So switching cost is, in the concrete case, the alternatives you have going from one to the other. The opportunity cost is the comparison with the best alternative. 
just opportunity. Huh? Mm. Um, this figure is in the textbook, and it's a way to show the demand curve in a market with networked externalities. So this is, in a way, a demand curve. And it's a way to analyze the market equilibrium in a market with networked externalities. So you describe the externalities in this blue demand curve. And you end up in two alternatives, either one or two, as the market equilibrium. But I can definitely tell you that today uh -uh, my voice <laughs> will not help me to uh, go through this figure because I just feel that now I'm in. it's not easy to lecture three hours <coughs> and today I think that I leave this figure for you to read it and for me to start the next lecture just to go briefly through figure 5.5, five five, tell you why this is a demand function. Go on, tell you why you find one stable equilibrium, and tell you why this is either one or two. But that is for the next year, next week. And remember, you skip chapter 6. Of course, if you want to read it, you, m you can, it's not very difficult, and, and you can definitely read it if you want to, but I will not teach over it, and it's not part of why I expect what I expect you to have learned from this course. Okay, until next week, when my voice will be much better, probably. <laughs> Have a good weekend. I will discuss that in that figure next week.